Hey everyone, it's Quant Namad here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will show you how easy it is to run grid optimization for your back tests in R. But first, let's take a moment to hear from the video sponsor. Let me introduce you to EOD HD, a premium provider of financial uh, data APIs. EOD HD offers over 30 years of historical data, real time prices, and fundamental data for global stocks, ETFs, Forex, bonds, and crypto through user friendly APIs. What's impressive is their affordable pricing, starting with um, a free plan and extending to advanced option from just $19.99. Plus, they offer 24-7 live support to help you whenever needed. Uh, whether you're a solo stock market enthusiast or part of a large team, they offer plans tailored to both individuals and corporations. And it's not just about the data, your DHD makes it incredibly easy to integrate this data into your workflow with code libraries and add-ons for Python, R, C Sharp, Excel, and Google Sheets ready to elevate your financial data game. Check out EODHD at AGHD.com, sign up for a free plan or explore their extended options for the advanced data. Now let's get back to the video. So here I have a very simple function that computes backtest, a very simple uh, strategy, and um, it gets an, as an uh, input uh, data frame with open high low close and some parameters to compute um, this um, backtest. And as a result, it outputs kind of very basic metrics. Also, I already prepared data, so I got the data from EODHD, so daily data for these five stocks and save them into the data folder of my project. So this way we can faster to get this data. So to check that it actually works um, correctly, we can just launch this code. And, um, and as you can see, it works well. So we just uh, got the data from the disk for Apple and we launched our uh, kind of simple backtesting strategy and received following metrics as a result. So now I want to define a grid with all parameter combination I want to compute for my um, backtest. So how, how will I do that is I will define like a grid and data frame and then I will use a function crossing. So function, function crossing works very simply. So it just takes all the parameters um, as a kind of like vectors that you uh, you pass to it and then it will just create all possible combination of uh, these uh, parameters. The first one I will choose uh, what will do kind of all the symbols. I will just copy this from uh, this file that I used to prepare the data. Um, and not, next I need to define kind of uh, parameters that I use for my uh, for my back test. So here I have only two parameters. The first one is fast moving average, second one is slow moving average. So I just arbitrarily will um, define these variables to my um, to choose to my taste. So we'll do 20, 25, let's say 30, 40, and 50. The last one will be for the fast moving average. And now slow moving average I will define as Let's so we'll start with 10, let's do 20, 25, 30, 40, 50. So 40, I missed 40, 50, um, 75, 100, 150, 200, 150 is the last one. So that's it. Uh, let's um, run this and let's see how it looks. And here you can see we have all this combination of parameter we just specified. And the final thing here for this um, grid is that I want to filter it a bit. So I want to define, um, I, I just don't want my uh, fast moving average length to be above slow moving average length. So just for definition, that's not correct. So I will say that fast um, moving average is below slow moving average. So this way we'll get a bit kind of less um, parameters but I think that it just um, makes sense to do it this way so it's clear what are we doing. So next, next let's work on um, the grid optimization process itself. So we'll create another um, variable called grid results and I will send, I will apply, I kind of assign this to lapply function. So how lapply function works is actually takes um, like a vector 
or list uh, from um, your input and then it just um, kind of execute specify function for every um, for every element of this list so um, so here is how I do this I just want to compute this uh, this for every row of my uh, grid um, data set and I specify grid here and here I receive kind of an index of uh, every line and for every kind of line I need to execute um, kind of my indicator. So we'll just uh, print uh, this I just to understand how, how, how quickly it works and then I just need to uh, get um, kind of parameters uh, from my kind of grid data set. I will use here as a list uh, function and I will just take a grid um, data set and I will take uh, I from it so it's just to take a row and then I transform this to a list and now kind of uh, it's kind of ready for to, to send this to uh, my uh, simple backtesting function so and now also I just need to um, to get um, to get the data for it first so I will do read CSV and here I just need to specify that I want to read data and I need to um, take from parameters my symbol so uh, we read correct data and we'll append CSV uh, so here yeah this is one is wrong so this way I think it should work fine let's um, apply I to one so we can uh, check how it works So now let's check kind of well of our um, parameters. Uh, so it seems to work fine. It got them as a list. So now let's try to read um, values for our uh, symbol. So it seems to work well as well. So what I can do now is I can uh, compute metrics and I can take my function. I will just copy this from um, from my previous example. And as a parameters, I will just um, send my list I um, I computed before so that's it so let's try to execute it and it seems um, that it works quite well so we got um, parameters for we got metrics for these parameters so um, the last thing I need to do here is that I just need to join um, metrics I computed uh, with um, with actual parameters that I, I um, I run it for so later kind of in the resulting data frame I will be able to distinguish parameter between each other so how I'll do that I will just uh, use a bin calls function and will join my metrics with my parameters so that's it so let's um, execute it and see if this works well so here you can see that for symbol um, Apple fast moving average 1 slow moving average, um, slow moving average 10 here are our result so it seems um, it works pretty well so now let's just um, output here a matrix and um, let's just run it for it will take a couple of minutes probably to compute uh, kind of all my grid um, values but let's wait and um, a return after it's over so it took a couple of uh, minutes and now it seems to be computed so um, I'll apply function output results to us as a list and just to uh, join this back as a kind of data frame we can use bint or rows um, kind of function so let's run it and now we can kind of see how our um, kind of grid results looks like and here you can see results computed for all the symbols and all kind of primary combinations and the great thing here is that this is just a data frame you can uh, sort by for example analyze return or just find out something with the best sharp here for example as you can see this there's strategy on Tesla that have sharp of 1.2 and it seems to be a best one in our kind of um, optimization so it seems um, to work um, kind of really well and you can go um, a bit um, um, forward and just to um, do some bit more kind of bit better analytics on it so it's quite dangerous to um, to analyze only a uh, single results of optimization because you can overfit really badly and um, you know this kind of results won't 
won't mean any meaningful results in actual trading. So um, what you can do is you can say you can just try to understand how this um, kind of grid looks like uh, for parameters. So I will use um, ggplot um, function as an example just to plot results as a heat map just to show you another way how you can use how you can look at kind of grid optimization results. So I will uh, subset from our grid results um, um, Apple um, stocks, uh, Apple results, stock kind of results for Apple stock. And here I will just need to specify uh, parameters as how I want to, um, what, what they want to show. So I want to show uh, like as X variable, my fast moving average um, in this heat map and um, as Y, I will use a slow moving average and um, for field, so for the color of the heat map, uh, let's um, let's take, uh, for example, um, um, analyzed um, uh, returns. So let's see what's the name in our data set. So yeah, so the analyzed returns copied this name from here. So that seems to be it. So now I just need to add geom tile and um, so, so that should be it. So let's run it to see if it works. So it seems um, it works pretty nicely. So here you can see on the right you have a scale for the best results to worst results. So best results seems to be kind of lighter. So here you can see, um, seems to be like this angle for um, for Apple, it seems to be a pretty kind of good backtesting results. And the last few notes for this video. So here I used LApply a function. And if you uh, have a pretty powerful PC or you have pretty powerful servers with a lot of cores, you can easily switch this to a function called par apply and it will actually paralyze your backtesting results so you can backtest this stuff much much faster and uh, of course another um, word of caution so um, take kind of this optimization results with a pinch of salt it doesn't guarantee that uh, these results will kind of um, will have influence on your future results so and always try to track that um, parameters you found actually is not overfitted. And to do that, there is some you know kind of common uh, techniques. Just try to search for a plateau in your data, so you have kind of local maximum in performance for one uh, single parameter. That that's probably not what's not happening. And also try to check kind of these results on other similar instruments. Um, try to use kind of like in and out um, kind of sample testing as well. So just be careful with these results. So I think that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. See you next one.